I used to be a nurse. And after that, I became a social worker. After that, I became a patient. Without my knowing, I was walking around with two aneurysms in my brain. And on the morning of the 4th of June, exactly 10 months ago today, one of those aneurysms ruptured, and I suffered a subarachnoid hemorrhage. The two weeks that followed are not two weeks I remember. I didn't realize at that time that the biggest and hardest job I've ever done started. I remember waking up one morning, I flexed my arms and legs, and everything worked. I remembered who I was, I remembered what I studied, I knew where I traveled, and I was overjoyed to find out that I could still speak English. Being married to a Brit, that's a really nice discovery. <laughs> I concluded I was fine, only I wasn't. I was extremely bothered by lights, smells, sounds, touch, and taste. My sensory systems were on a continuous overdrive and overload. I couldn't remember things that just happened, and I spent my time wondering what went wrong. After three weeks in hospital, they transferred me to a rehabilitation center. When I arrived there, they asked me what I wanted to achieve, and I had no answer. I surrendered myself to their knowledge and expertise. After about a month, I discovered I was special. There was a lot of knowledge in that center about limbs not working or being confused, losing your way, not knowing where you are. But I wasn't confused. I knew where I was. But I would cringe when someone turned on the light, or I would cry and try to hide when it rained for the falling drops made such an excruciating sound in my head. I couldn't stand the pain. I couldn't eat with other people. The structured group environment of the clinic was impossible for me to fit in, for everybody talks and makes sounds with their cutleries, and the amount of sounds that come at us as humans is enormous. Well, other people, the clinic, Blah, blah. The clinic had an answer to my problems. They suggested that I should start taking pills, anti-epileptic pills or even anti-psychotic medication. And that's when I bolted, because my ship was steering in a direction I seriously didn't want to go to. I worked in mental health care for years, and I knew what these kinds of medications can do. I just survived a brain hemorrhage I wasn't about to subject my injured brain to something that might relieve my problems, while I needed all my strength to deal with the effects, both physical, cognitive, and emotional, of having your life turned upside down all of a sudden. The answer I found was the internet. Luckily, the clinic had Wi-Fi. While all the other patients received visitors, I twittered, I wrote on my blog, and I found help. I emailed experts on hyperacusis, the sound sensitivity that I suffer from. That's the, my biggest problem and the hardest to control. And I found some doctors, professors, and I e even emailed Dr. Jill Bolte-Taylor, an American neuroanatomist who suffered a stroke herself. Few of them answered me. They all answered the same thing. <clears throat> I'm not your doctor, so I can be specific. But you're so early in your recovery, there's plenty of time to start taking those pills as a last resort. That strengthened me. My opinions were valid. My feelings and thoughts were legit. I called in the cavalry, my sister and husband, and together, together, we prepared a note for my doctor. We prepared for a talk, and we sat down. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't horrible either. But we made sure, I made sure, that this was not how it was going to go down. At that moment, I regained control of my ship. 
I self-promoted me to being the captain of my ship. And at that moment, everything changed. My issues stayed the same. I still suffer from lights. I still hate sounds and smells. And my life shrunk into this tiny little bubble. The thing that changed most was that being my own self, my own boss, I was the captain. It empowered me. And it changed my vision and my outlook on life. It changed my mood. And it gave me hope and strength. And I know I could go on. My memory's not that good, so I'm probably the only one who can read <laughs> while I'm up here. The therapists and doctors that surround me now are all willing to look at what I bring in. They all want to know what I found out online. And together with their expertise, we figure out and we filter out what might help me on my road to recovery. They're all regular visitors to my blog as well. The only shame is that they have to read up on me in their free time, because their computer department blocks my site, because it's for personal use. It's not work. Meanwhile, my improvement goes on. Compared to me, a snail travels at super speed. But I'm at peace with that now. It's my ship, my beautiful, slow-moving ship. Destination unknown, but my trip is worthwhile, and I'm so glad I could make it. Yeah.